Hello my friends, welcome again to my video channel. Today we'll start a new project, the ASO FT857, not D, without D version, only the 857. It is a shortwave and VHF and UHF transceiver on shortwave 100 watts, on the VHF and UHF bands a little bit less, 50 and uh, I think 30 watts, all modes. USB, LSB, CW, FM, AM and also input for digital modulation. It's a typical portable or mobile transceiver. can also be used as a base station. The owner told me that there's a problem. This transceiver has no output on 80, 40 and 30 meters. Other bands are obviously okay. Reception I think should be also okay. So let's do some first tests. The first thing I observed is that the PTT does not work. There is not a lock switch, no. It's only for tone or so. There's also no lock on the transceiver. It is unlocked. That doesn't work when I go to lock, okay. Of course this is not working, other keys are also blocked. It can be set in one of the menus. But when I unlock it, nothing works but with the Vox function. You see? There is output. 80 meter. Nothing. The lamp here shows transmission. But no power. Also on 40 meters, on 30 meters, I mean the SSB band, nothing, no output, 20 meters is okay, and the other bands, oops, are also okay. I will check now the receive function, whether the receive path is okay in all bands and then look for the PTT function why it does not work and for the uh, maybe problems also in receive or no problem in receive. We will see in a minute. My good old HP 8640B is set to 1 microvolt, 1.7 megahertz with mode LSB. That's okay, with uh, one microphone, microvolt. Then let's go to the next band. Three, five, five, Five five fifty. It's also three five five. That's where we have no transmission. Seven megahertz. Seven thousand one hundred. So obviously the receive is okay also in those bands where the transmission is not okay. Now let's go to the 30 meter. Uh, sorry. Ten, one, three, three. That's also good. Hands on. Not necessary to show it. But as I see, all bands are okay in receive mode. I check on the next one, 14 megahertz. Also good. We have here a 10 meter band, one microvolt, I go down to 0.3 
If this is 0 0.1. On off. Yes, we have good sensitivity on all bands. Only transmission is bad on some bands. Others are okay. Well, we have to look now to the schematics, see how the uh, PTT function works or why it does not work. What the problem is, why the VOX does operate the relay and the, I switched the VOX off, of course, to prevent high power to be fed into the generator. Would be ugly to see why it uh, works with VOX on bands. Some bands, PTT, as you see, does not work. Okay, let's start. The case is open. We have here the so-called main board where the signal is generated. We will discuss it later in the schematic. First, I want you to show now the... Have a look here. PTT works. I don't know what happened on all bands, but the problem is still the same. We don't have output on the three bands as we uh, have discussed. We are on 10 megahertz. <whistles> nothing. And on the other two bands also nothing. <coughs> 80, 40 and 30 meters dead. The others work, but the PTT is okay now. Maybe we have a problem with these uh, stupid connectors here. These uh, LAN connectors are uh, not, not the best choice for the purpose. Maybe we, we have a problem with this plug here or here. Here's also one. It is uh, kinked by 90 degrees to feed it out on the side. The front panel can be removed. There are also some of these connectors involved. So this may be the reason. But still the problem persists. Now uh, let's have a, a first discussion in the schematic where the problem could be located and how to continue. Here we have the output and input bandpass filters. These bandpass filters are used for TX and RX direction and we have seen that the RX mode is okay on all bands, on all shortwave bands. So we can assume that these components are also okay for uh, transmit. The relay itself, of course, we could assume that the contact for TX is not the same as for RX and then the TX contact could be burned, but we have a problem in three bands and very interesting one relay this is this one here is for 10 and for 14 megahertz driven by this driver transistor and on 10 megahertz we have a problem on 14 megahertz we have no problem so it cannot be the relay because it's not possible that the relay has a contact problem which we have on 10 megahertz no output and on 14 megahertz full output so the assumption can be that this part here is okay so we can focus now on the go back into the VHF and here we have the uh, PA part the power amplifier with the two transistors push-pull configuration very well known here we have here we have some high and low pass filters for VHF UHF and HF separation this is a power transistor for VHF UHF this is a transmit input for all bands and for the shortwave bands we have here the selection of this direction into this uh, transistors and here we have VHF and UHF this is VHF and this is UHF both are fed to this transistor and here we have the output for VHF and UHF antenna and this is a, the RX input the receive input. But we focus now on the transmit path and the first check will be to see whether we have here full power, full drive input for these transistors on all HF bands and whether we can see here a drop of power for the three bands which are not operating. Here we have the driver output on the main board <coughs> and this cable is connected directly to the input of the PA unit as we have seen so we will measure here now whether we have output 
on all bands or whether some bands are, bands are missing and whether the problem is here or the problem is here I assume the problem is here so I should say PA exclude uh, some bands okay maybe a, a crazy relay fault but let's check first the output of this driver stage and see what, what's coming out here the next test setup is uh, the input for the PA this pin, you can see this pin is unplugged instead of this pin it's the output of the main board we have seen this is an adapter cable connected to the scope there's a 50 ohm termination I don't know whether the impedance here is 50 ohm exactly but it cannot be wrong to have 50 ohms it's better than this cable not terminated and open with one mega ohm and some picofarad now we should have a signal on all bands or not Let's check it, uh, 160 meter. You can see there is a signal. 80 meter, no output. 40 meter, we see no output. 30 meter, 10 megahertz, no output. 14 megahertz, we have a signal. 18 megahertz, and the other bands also. So we have the problem on the main board that the main board does not supply a signal to the uh, PA stage on the three bands where we have a problem. So the problem is on the main board. Now we have seen that the problem is most probably here on the main board. So it's time now to measure all supply voltages, voltages and the switched voltages. TX 8 volt and receive 8 volt and bias voltages and other voltages which are used to control the uh, amplifiers and mixers and oscillators and so on. So there are some um, voltages which have to be checked. First is the 8 volt rail. We have 13.8 volt input and we have 8 volt. It's difficult to locate the components here on this uh, SMD board. This layout is not very good, but there are coordinates on the parts list. You see it here on the second, on my second laptop. In the part list, there are coordinates given in this row or column, and in the row uh, to show where the component is. So it's a lot, rather easy now to locate it here in this part where it is, and it's a little bit easier to to find it. First, we check the supply voltage, of course. We have the 13.8 volt input, which comes from the. Oops, that's dangerous. Yes, that's the input, 13.5 volt, and the output of this voltage stabilizer is the 8 volt. In RX and in TX mode. That's okay. The bias voltage. There is a bias voltage derived from it via 5 volt and the 2 volt. I can measure not directly because it's on the other side of the board as usual but there is a, a, an integrated circuit and at pin 5 1, 2, 3, 4 5, yes, we can measure 4.99, not 2 volt, what did I say, 2 volt, no, it's 5 volt, yes, it's a 5 volt, <coughs> correct, yes, it's 5 volt, the 8 volt, which is okay, it's converted down to 5 volt, and this is only a buffer amplifier, which also supplies 5 volt, and that's what we have measured here, what we can measure, why did I say 2 volt? Oh no, I'm getting old. RX and TX. By the way, I'm in the 80 meter band where we have problem with the output. But the bias is constant. RX and TX. The TX 9 volt, uh, the 8 volt TX 8 is generated on Q1020. 
and Q1020 is located this one it is here and it's here as I can see it is the output and when I switch on to transmit 7.9 7 and this is nothing it's on the band where we have no output when I go up to 14 megahertz and we have output so TX8 is also okay RX8 has to be checked now but the receive path is okay but I check it Q1013 is the neighboring transistor. We have in receive 7.99 in transmit.36. Okay. I think that's not a problem to have a residual voltage of 0.36 so RX is also okay and the receive path is okay we have seen receive is, is okay for all bands the supply voltages and the switched supply voltages for RX and TX seem to be okay and now let's have a look into the block diagram where we are we found that the output this is the blue one is the signal of the SSB signal in case of transmit here we have the microphone audio amplifier stages and some uh, limiters clippers low pass filters here is a modulator which makes a DSB signal goes through the 455 kilohertz filter we have here the SSB signal here's a mixer which generates a 68.33 megahertz IF this is also the chain for RX and the signal goes back 68.33 megahertz comes through here and here we have the PLL and here is the mixer which generates the output signal and here we have the filters here we have measured in the uh, main board output that the signal is missing in some bands this is a PA part here we disconnected the cable and measured the output <coughs> here are some filters now the next important part will be to check the PLL whether we have a problem in the PLL with the uh, generation of the uh, v first LO signal output here we have the ring mixer so we will check now the input to the ring mixer there's a TP1033 and the amplifier here we have the AGC and uh, power adjust suspicious power adjust mm, could make trouble maybe it's a software problem this is the output of the switch here we have the FM generation that's a crystal for the FM modulator it's a 22 megahertz it's a tripler times 3 so we have here 68 megahertz also for the SSB or FM signal and the AM signal I think is generated on the SSB path not so important in the moment we will measure now the input of the mixer have a short check of the output of course of the uh, PLL and uh, then we can continue with the measurement of the pins but uh, first I think we should check the output of the PLL whether we have a problem but I don't think that we have a problem with the PLL but because uh, RX is okay and it's the same PLL the same signal which is fed to the transmit path is also fed here to the mixer for RX this is the RX path and I can't imagine that we have a problem in the output in case of TX and RX is okay because the PLL is not switched from RX to TX only maybe an offset or so <coughs> anyhow we will check it first we will check the PLL output and then we can focus on the IF of the SSB signal I'm measuring the output of the PLL the set frequency is 14 MHz plus 68 it's 82 something when I tune it okay the frequency changes this is RX in the case of TX I also have it and when I go down in the band I'll do 10 megahertz where we have the problem no output 
but we still have the uh, VFO, we have 10 megahertz plus 68 is 78. I go down another band, 7 megahertz. Same effect. So the output of the PLL is not a problem. Now we are measuring the input from the IF for the ring mixer. On 14 megahertz where we have the output signal. Go down to 10 megahertz. Nothing. And on 7 megahertz also nothing. This is 1.8 megahertz where we again have output. So we see that on it is TP1033. There we have the problem with the signal. The signal disappears. The IF signal disappears for the bands in discussion. And 1033 is this one. Now we go to TP1070. TP1070, where is it? Oh my god. Here is it. This is TP1070. Increase it a little bit. This is 40 megahertz. Go down to 10 megahertz. Seven megahertz. Three point five megahertz. and 1.8 megahertz. This means on TP1070 we have signal in all bands. Yes, very simple. Here we have the signal, here we don't have the signal. And what is in between? IF amplifier, power adjust, ALC. Aha. Do we have a problem with the ALC? Or is it a software problem? Is there a setting which prevents output on some bands? Crazy enough. I have to check it. We have seen in the last measurements that uh, on this test point here we have the signal on all bands. And here we have a signal only on some bands and the three bands in discussion have no output. What's in between this transistor here and maybe also this one. Especially let's focus now on this one. This transistor here gets a TX 8 volt. Okay, that's a power supply in case of 8 volt for drain. And the uh, gate voltage. Well, here is an ALC voltage fed into it to reduce the power when too much forward or reflected power. I have to check it what it is exactly in the TX control. Uh, is reduced the output power. And here we have another one, TXG. I think it means TX gain. And this is fed to this diode. And this diode looks like to be used as a pin diode or similar to reduce the output power or to set the output power, the gain, because there is a menu in the uh, transceiver to set output power to full power or to reduced output power. And I think this TH, TXG, this signal is used to do this. And then to, to reduce the signal to the uh, balanced mix. And here we have measured the reduced of the non-existing output power. So maybe we have a problem with this diode with the control voltage TXG or maybe with the ALC voltages, but the ALC voltages are frequency independent. 
and as I see not controlled directly by the processor but this TX gain is controlled by the processor because TXG is generated which are with an DA converter. Let's have a look at the schematic. Here we have the generation of the signal TXG. It's generated by this integrated circuit. It's a, a DA converter with a, a storage in it, a shift register. The input is the data FD. We can have a look at it. It is pin 17, that's FD, that's the data coming in, I assume from the processor. And here we have the output, TX gain, and here is something with RX gain. Maybe the RX path can also be uh, controlled by this output here. So the next suspect is this signal, so we can look at it. But first, for information, we will uh, look at this integrated circuit, what it does. The circuit is the MC62352. It's an 8 bit 12 channel DA converter. And when we have a look into the output arrangement, then we can see what happens. Here we have the pin 17. DI means data in. It's a 12 bit shift register. And the pin Number three, for example, it's a latch. The latch registers and pin three, the output is used for TXG. So the data coming in from the processor, this shift register, this is data out, but this pin is not used, only data in. The data are stored in the shift register and then sent via the DA converter to this output. This is RX gain, as I remember, TX gain and other outputs. So we have here the TXG and now look, let's have a look at the THG signal, how it behaves when we swap the bands. Next step is to measure the TXG voltage. The gain voltage is pin 3 of the DA converter, 1, 2, 3. And this pin here is connected to this pad. And here we can measure the output voltage, the drive voltage, which controls the gain of the amplifier, transmit amplifier. Let's check it. Of course, I made a, a complete software reset according to the manual for all memories, CPU reset. So all informations are uh, set back to the default setting of the factory. And now we, we can start with a measurement in the uh, 1.8 megahertz band. Yes, you are right. You are always right. We have output and it's difficult to connect it clearly without damaging anything. We see the voltage is 1.5 volt and we have output. When we go one band up, 3.5, we have only 1.6 volt, no output. Next band is 7 megahertz, no output. 10 megahertz, no output. And when we go up to 14 megahertz, again we have 1.2. And the other bands also we have uh, 15 megahertz, 18, why is there 15 megahertz? We always have 1.2 and in the lower bands we had 1.0. Okay, with this gain setting, it is uh, intended by the manufacturer to compensate the different gains in different frequency ranges. I studied the manual and I have seen during the alignment process there are different settings for the different uh, high frequency ranges which have to be set for a certain output power. And I will redo this. There has to be selected a certain menu and then this can be done and I will try it. 
There are a lot of menus and submenus setting the output power. I found TXG for 1.8 megahertz. Okay, my USB can also go to LSB. 100 watt. Then I go to the next menu. This is uh, number 45. This is for for. Um, gain adjustment HF1, yes, that's, that's correct. It's for the USB mode. USB mode is, is required for adjustment, okay. Let's use USB mode. 70 watt, should be adjusted to 70 watt. A little bit less. Then the next one is chosen with this knob. Number 46, that's on 7 megahertz. And this should be set for... Also for 70 watt. Okay. And the next one is 21 megahertz, 40, number 47. Same output power. Well, it is set now for USB. I did the same before for CW, for uh, transmission in CW. And now, surprise, surprise, we have output on 40 meter, 7 megahertz. Ah, it's CW. Sorry. Only also on 80 meter. Packet, digital, nah. Operator to stupid error. I think it was only a question of a complete new alignment. It's not a hardware problem, it was a software problem. I studied the manual for several hours to find out which menu and sub-menu is used to set this and that and another setting and so on. It is cruel. It is not a simple transceiver. So I think we have not a hardware problem. It was really only a software problem of setting the menus and sub-menus for alignment. Yes, read the fucking manual. Sorry to say this. I screwed the transceiver together, top and bottom cover, like this. Of course the speaker is connected, switched it on, nothing happened. Dead. Absolutely dead. No current is flowing, nothing. I opened it again, and what did I see? A genius added this self-adhesive conductive strip on the speaker and this is intended to squeeze on onto this microprocessor here. But this is conductive, very conductive, you see. This material shorts this, a lot of pins of this processor, so the processor is blocked. Now it is open, everything works again, and again we have output power. I assume someone wanted to improve the cooling of this processor, but this cannot be done this way. We need a better solution. Or do we need a solution? I'm not sure. I use here a small infrared camera. The transceiver is running for several hours. We have here a hotspot with 47, 48 Celsius. That's the 8 volt regulator. There's this one, 
this unit and the processor here is approximately where is it here it is it has a temperature of 41 celsius that's okay other hotspots cannot be seen on the board this one is the uh, af output stage so the hottest spot is definitely the voltage regulator and the processor is cool rather cool without problems well summary we had no hardware fault when we exclude this funny crazy uh, conductive tap on the loudspeaker I think it was factory made because the glue on it the self adhesive glue was not sticky it was brittle so it was old and I think it was installed in the factory I really don't know the reason why it has nothing to do with temperature and if the would get hot the processor would get hot such a tap makes no sense because it is filled with foam and foam is a bad thermal conductor should it be an additional shielding no i don't know why what the reason is maybe some acoustic damping of the board to avoid some resonances with the loudspeaker could be anyhow i will do some final tests check vhf uhf but these two uh, frequencies are also okay and do some alignment steps with the uh, alignment procedure for software i do not do a hardware alignment i think it's not necessary as i don't find any problem in the software alignment so this project is finalized if you have such a transceiver open it and look onto the loudspeaker whether there is also such a funny uh, conductive pad on it remove it immediately it will make trouble over the years as we have seen and that's what i think the trouble was not made by by one of the owners i think it was made by shorting the processor some leads to ground or some leads together which caused a reset or any other effects which are not uh, documented in the manual of the uh, processor maybe if i cause crazy and erratic reactions of the processor when some pins are connected which shouldn't be connected when it is switched on and off so i think that was the reason this funny tap and nothing else stay healthy stay tuned see you on this channel and should i have seen earlier this fault earlier think about a software problem yes and no maybe yes you know the movie the name of the rose with scene connery it's a movie in the middle ages in a european monastery there are strange things happening and one of the monks says always when he has done a stupid thing he says always stupido stupido this means i'm stupid and hits its head to the wall i don't do this but maybe I should do it.